6 o'clock, you're listening to the Dr. Taylor North Show. Well, what else would you be listening to at 6 o'clock? Right? I got Scotty Newland here, the amazing, the amazing high, high vocal singer. But I'm going to start it off with Fox News and Unstoppable. Stick around. Scotty Newland. Hey, radio. Music for the masses. You're listening to the Dr. Taylor North Show. With your host, me, Dr. Taylor. Oh, well, yeah, you know. I'm also here with Scotty Newland. What's up, Scotty? How are you doing today? Thanks. Not bad, not bad. If you want to check him out, scottynewland.com is going to be on my website pretty, or my uh, Facebook pretty soon. But the computer is out, unfortunately. Just give me a sec, all right? Just give me a sec. I'll get that up. There. Technology is a wonderful thing, too. So let's have uh, a round of introduction here. You know, I already said your name fully. But uh, what's up, Scotty? Uh, your voice can go high. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I guess you could classify me as a counter tenor. Um, essentially, four octave range. And what I do, I had some basic classical background uh, training in what I did, and male soprano all the way through junior high, high school, all the rest of it. And I've just been able to, you know, keep that range up in what I do, incorporate that into my music today. And and now I'm just lucky that, you know, I'm still able to have the range that I had before and play around, totally mess with people's heads, and they get to chick singing or something like that. Oh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. That. I was actually, uh, I was listening to your stuff throughout the week. I was showing it to some people, and one of my friends said, uh, Yo, he's like a white usher. <laughs> but uh, I, I take that as a compliment. Very much so. Right. Right. That's very cool. Uh, but, uh, yes, I have been listening to your album, uh, Starting Over, which you. has your song The Writer on it. Yep. Which plays in radio stations, you know, like nationwide. Now, have have you been in any Canadian or radio stations? Have you ever still played there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, through my management, uh, current management under Jerry Young, who's a fantastic guy. He is, he is my, um, my, my main contact for radio tracking and also my manager as an artist. He has released that track as well as a few others through uh, his network. And there are a number of different stations across the country that are playing it. I've got stuff in the West, the East, some places in Ontario as well as Quebec that are playing it. But uh, so far, none in the great city of Toronto. So well, this, uh, let me tell you something, Scotty. Now you're in the great city of Toronto. There we go. Stay radio. Well, I'm, I'm honored and privileged that you guys are the first time here. Stay your radio That's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> now, uh, you have a four vocal range. Four octaves, yes. Four octaves, I mean. Yes. My bad. No. Who are some of your inspirations to get up to those things? What are some of those guys you, uh, you thank yourself to practice to get your voice to such an octave? Well, so, you, so, so, yeah, sort of a, a loaded question. Um, there's. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a broad. Yeah, that's okay. No, okay. When, I, when I was growing up, I, I had a number of different musical influences and that such. Uh, started listening to Creedence Clearwater Revival. And that was pretty cool. Bad and Rising, the very first song that I ever remember, you know, hearing in my. Uh, that's it. A little bit of John Fogarty. Never heard anybody. So that was fun. Um, but as far as the upper tenor range of of male performers, I guess yeah, I'd have to look at Freddie Mercury, uh, Frankie Valli. Ah yes. And you know, legendary yeah, Barry Gibb, obviously. Um, oh, and forgive me, I can't think of, of his name, but the lead singer of Journey. <laughs> you know, everyone goes. That's how you do it. Yeah, do not stop believing. So I've just been been lucky, but um, as a from from female singers, obviously, you know, you cannot discount as much as people you know have have horrible things to say about her. I'm a fan of a female singer. Actually, I I think I should off. We'll go back to it. But this Friday, uh, along with another another event going on, which I will be talking about just in a little bit. Friday, Mother Lee's Boot Helm. They're gonna be at the Smiling Buddha, and it's a Halloween show, so. Everyone's going to be dressing up. And if you don't remember Boone Helm, they were in here. They had the lead, uh, lead girl singer. Okay. So you got nothing to do on Friday, which, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the 26th. It's, it's the Halloween weekend. Almost. You guys got to go see them or come up to this event, but I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Back to Scotty here. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. Uh, well, yeah. No, no, no problem. Now, yeah. could, could you do a deep voice? Or is I, I, can, I can do some deep voices, but I'm certainly nowhere near in the same bass register as what you would be, so you, right, come on, you would completely put me in. All right. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, now it just sounds like I'm yeah, either flashlighting on the air or, you know, cutting something. But, no, uh, I would never claim to be, you know, the man in black, Johnny Cash, or Barry White or anything like that. I, I have my own register that I work with. But, uh, no, it, it's I'm, I've just been lucky that fortunate enough I don't sound like Minnie Mouse or Alvin and the Chipmunks when I'm speaking normally. Yeah. But uh, I have fun. But, no, I, I was going back to um, things like Celine Dion. 
I cannot cannot discount her for what she has done for Canadian music and, and certainly the power and conviction in which she sings her music with. And a lot a lot of people a lot of people put her down just because it's yeah, it's so easy to, to put down someone who's an absolute international superstar. But you try doing what she did and, and look at her back history and her story and what she did and she deserves everything that she had and that's come to her. And uh, same thing with, you know, Shania Twain and what her, her story was, you know, the the wonder from Timmins. But um, as far as the female singers, Lannis Morissette. Morissette, same sort of thing, you know, uh, didn't start out anywhere near what, what she is today. But hard work and perseverance will definitely pay off. And then th those, there are ones that love you, and then there's the haters because they're trying to do it and they can't, and they're trying to take the, the easy way out of the short change. And that's it. I mean, you, you it's, it's funny. You sort of know you've made it when you've got the haters because they're trying to do what you're doing. you got the innovators, you got the image and everything else, and well, you do what you got to do. You got the aviators. Absolutely. Well, terminators. Terminators, yes. You also let those about to come through. Yes, I don't know, really. That was horrible. Um, it, was, it wasn't one of my best jokes. No, yeah. but that's cool because there is an aviation program here in Seneca, isn't there? Really? I think there is. I don't think here. Well, maybe not here because that would be really yeah. close considering you got Pearson over here and it would really well, suck yeah, if you yeah, were doing it. You can see an airplane, I guess. Like, well, you can. Like, yeah. Kind of the time. It is. It uses yeah. for Little Caesars or something and they're advertising free pizzas or something, so you never quite know. But, anyways. And have a great time and do what we have to do. So, yeah, no, and I, I, yeah. <laughs> that's something we're going to get into uh, after the break. This guy can do a lot of voices. He's a voice actor. But there's a question I want to ask you before we go to break here. Uh, who do you think in Belt Out the very highest? You know, Mika, Foxy, Shazam, that was the first band mm -hmm. that played uh, before we started talking here, if you were wondering. Yep. Do you use Freddie Mercury or, or, or AHA? Ah, I don't know. I'm going to let you think about that, and we're going to come back to it after the break. I'll see you at that. Go to my Facebook page, Dr. T Show. Answer that question. I want to know. Who do you think could belt it out the very highest? And check out Scotty Newland's The uh, Starting Over album, HMB, and Amazon, or anywhere you can buy those fine music. Here's a song by him. Hold on. He's going to be here for a little bit more, a little longer on the National Hero Show.
That is right. I am the doctor's play radio, unless you find another one on here. <laughs> In that case, I'm going to kill him. But I was talking about this uh, event coming up on Friday at the Seneca Pub. It's a Trick or Treat Fog Halloween Party by Raider Ray Entertainment, and it's on the 26th, so this Friday, at the Peanut Plaza, 3030 Down Mills Road. For girls and costumes before 1030, it's free shots. Two, two, I don't know. Get this. It's free shots for everybody, and it's free shots on my show at 6.30. If you call in, you get a super prize pack. We got Scotty Newland's Hades womb t-shirts, free shots, and free entrance to this party. It's, okay, wait, wait, wait. I haven't got through the explanation yet. 250 tequila shots, $3 pints, $10 pitchers, whipped cream body shots, and free candy. Come on now. Free candy for everybody. And 10, or 100 free shots handed out before 10.30, so you got to get there early. That's a lot. And I got shots to give. So 6:30, call in 416-491-5050, extension 33430, and get this prize pack. It's big. It's the biggest one I got yet. But it's time for some celebrity gossip. I still don't have a voice, so if you know anybody that has a, a specific voice, any kind, well, you know, it's got to be interesting. But if they have an interesting voice, send them my way. I do need a new announcer for celebrity gossip. But I guess now I'll have to do it. Christina Aguilera has been offered $3 million to become a new face of a dating website for curvy women. Mm. The the previous website reached out for uh, Adele, but she's like, nah, I don't do that. Lindsay Lohan, again, is seeking a restraining order from her dad after a failed intervention. And now, like, what a, I decided, I'm going to call it, what a Lohan thing to do. Like, that's so Lohan of you to do. Wow. Obama and Jay-Z... Uh, are handing out parent tips to each other, but uh, I guess they neglected that Jay-Z and Beyonce tried to copyright their kid's name, Blue Ivy, into a clothing brand. <laughs> you know, it, it, like, where where did that parenting tip go from the president? Just don't sell your kids. Don't sell your kids. More Scotty Newland's coming up at 6.30. If you want to call in and win this prize pack, because it's huge and you want it. Scotty Newland, now you're gone. You're going to be here until 7 o'clock. Don't be here. No, go anywhere. Now that you're gone, it's got a new one. I'm stay right here. I think what I have in you has been for life. I didn't stop to think about the Lord. My mind was always caught up in the truth reality. I worked in my career to reach above. But in the light of day, I see the errors of my way. I just can't deny the pain I caused. With so 
491-5050, extension 33430. Call in, win this prize pack. You get yourself free entrance, three shots to this Halloween party at the Seneca Pope on Friday. Scotty Newland's CDs and a Loom t-shirt. Call in right now. 416-491-5050, extension 33430. And you win. Mm. Stay radio, music for the masses, 640. 640, stay radio, and I got a little treat. Since we don't have the song, the writer on the library, I'm so, so sorry, Scotty. Nah, it happens. Please, don't let it ever judge what's going to happen next. It's like he's going to play it on his phone, so check it out just a little bit. Just a little bit. How beautiful. How beautiful is that? And I wish we could play it on stay radio, but we had some malfunction. You got lost. You got lost upon the lost. <laughs> so you have a very um, oops, sorry, a little loud. You have a very touching, you know, charming story about. I guess, like, I don't know if, you, if, I'm, if I'm speaking for you, like your inspiration behind your voice and why you use it. You want to share that with the doctor? Well, Doc. Um, yeah, actually, it's it's sort of interesting the way things have gone on. I, I've I've been really truly blessed to work with some incredible musicians. And uh, had some some teachers over the years that have, have helped me in my vocal development and such. But um, back in 2009, in, in early decade, is actually in February of 2009, I actually suffered a spontaneous pneumothorax. And because you're a doctor, you probably know what that means. That's exactly what that means. That's exactly it. Uh, why don't you go tell me? Because I because I already know. I want you to That's it. Uh, good 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 cover. Um, yeah. Basically, for for those of you that aren't med students, uh, I had a sudden lung collapse, and they don't quite know why, but it, apparently it targets slim, fit young men. Well, I've got the um, slim and young, really. I'm basically you know. 100 pounds soaking wet, so I'm not quite sure about the other part, but moving on. Uh, essentially, this is what happened, and so the lung collapsed, it attached from the rib cage, landed into the chest cavity, and as a result, it left me uh, completely void of, of air pressure in my right lung, and so my left one took over. But before I went under surgery, they actually told me that if it wasn't for me being a singer and the fact that I had been able to develop my voice and work and everything that I probably wouldn't have survived the trauma of that nor would I have gotten through the next two weeks with a tube in my chest so I could actually go through and have the surgery so now that I'm it's almost like you have superpowers so you're like um, a friend of man it's, it's almost like I have superpowers but uh, not not quite they haven't quite branded you know titanium man yet but you can know. you uh, can you crack windows with your voice yeah uh, Banshee, man. I guess it really depends. If I dress up as Banshee for I I could probably do that. Yes. Uh, they they I'll have to find a children's costume that you know maybe works for me because I can't use the. I don't uh, make it yourself, man. I'll make it myself. I was Green Lantern for Halloween last year, and it really? was quite darling. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Ryan Reynolds version, or I think it was. It was a a, a children's Please. costume okay. that was purchased and then retrofitted so it could go over my tiny business. I sort of looked like Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. It was. It was you uh, could pull. I, I can see that. I, I could probably do that. But anyways, as a result, now I've got uh, titanium staples holding me in place, and my voice has never been stronger. I've been able to you have increase my voice. Like, like Wolverine. A little bit, yeah. Just not quite as marketable as uh, as Logan. So we're, wow. we're still we're still working on the royalty rights to that. But uh, anyways, I do have to give you know kudos to the surgeons and such that actually took care of it. And uh, really, it's really helped me in what I've done. I sing the anthems at various, you know, uh, Toronto groups here in the city, the Raptors, Gays, Argos, Leafs, Toronto FC, and uh, it's always been an honor to do that. And since I've had the surgery, I've been able to basically increase my range as well as power and fortitude. So now, where else have you done done this thing? I heard you uh, you recently started doing the, the funerals. Yes, uh, I actually I have sort of a, a side thing that I I do various secular performances, non secular that sort of thing. So I'll do. Uh, wedding performers and not like the wedding singer, but I will take place in the actual ceremony and, and, and that sort of thing. So as uh, utilizing my, my classical background or semi-classical, I'll do weddings. I've done funeral services. I can do ceremonial events or uh, milestones and that sort of thing. So it's uh, it's interesting. And I'm, I'm really lucky that because I had the, the background that it wasn't just from a pop 
you know, scenario, that I was able to tap into that and I can utilize what I've, I've learned in the past and, and bring that to the forefront. And fortunately, when it's someone that's close to you that you have to do it for, it's a little bit more difficult, but I take it, take it very seriously. And it's a huge honor to be asked and be either contracted out or, or asked to do something for, for a group or, or a friend to, to help them in times of need or times of, of sorrow. So it's uh, just a, a side part of it, like every other musician has, has their side job and what they do, I, I do that and, and other, other stories. And actually with my, my management and such, uh, they're, they're Jerry Young, who is you know, famous for his involvement with Juno bands such as the Parachute Club and Martha and Martin, some of your callers may know, you know, who... Uh, who they are, you know, maybe maybe not, you know, back back to the eighties and that sort of thing. Google it. Google it. They, they are they they are the the forefathers for what a lot of the stuff is that we hear today. But anyways, he is my manager. He's been absolutely fantastic, and he's done some current management. And uh, he's he's the reason that I've been able to get a lot of stuff out today. And if it wasn't for his um, basically diligence and fortitude and uh, and living up to everything he's he's done, he's been an incredible mentor to work with uh, to be able to get things out with thirty years in the industry. He's got his own book out now. Pop, you know, Pop Goes a Weasel, and it's all about his um, his, his background. No, 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 Pop Goes a Weasel. You can find it through Amazon and all the rest of it. And uh, basically, he's he's got his stuff and tells about all the people that he's worked with, and it's an absolutely incredible read. So if you guys want to sort of look at what. Canadian rock was like back in the in the 70s and 80s. But it's a fantastic read. It's an easy read, and, it, and it's straight from the horse's mouth. And, and uh, you know, Jerry, I can't thank you enough for what you've, you've done for me. But honestly, people, if you're listening and you want to see what what it was like in the early days, that's what it's about. And people like Greg Cavanaugh, who I, who is the producer, main producer on on this album, has worked with a number of different artists, and he's got multiple awards himself. And nicest guy in the world. And fantastic to work with and it's just a matter of finding the right uh, person to compliment your sound and, and what's going through and, and well, your label does that compliment your sound at all? Well absolutely uh, Blue Sapphire is, is, has a uh, partnership with Deaf and Universal Music and this is where my music is actually being distributed through and through Jerry Young uh, basically this is where, where everything is, is, is being filtered and they are a fantastic little indie indie label that works to support independent musicians and put stuff out there and if it's you know, getting good quality, shall, shall we say, either un, unknown or uh, or little known talent uh, in in Canada to facilitate a, a means to get their stuff out there and, and increase their audience and listening base. Now, you do you you do use your voice for more than just singing. I'm aware. <laughs> You're also uh, quite quite the voice actor here. Well, I've uh, I'm I'm with a, an agency here in Toronto, and yes, I do get sent out for voiceover work, and I do I do some some fun stuff. Actually, being a, a former York alumnus, uh, I I did some <laughs> work. <laughs> Go York! And uh, basically, you know, had a lot of fun doing doing presentations in my multimedia classes, but I I transpose that over into my uh, professional career now, where I try to utilize whatever it is people want. If they want to do jingles or whatever, I may I may do that. But uh, have, I just have a lot of fun, and, and with my, um, shall we say, abnormally high and, and, and vast range as a, as a male performer, I'm able to tap into a lot of different styles of uh, speaking and performance to basically extract whatever it is that people want as a as there's, one, uh, there's, there's one you were talking about earlier, P.B. Herman. Oh, geez. Is it cool we hear a little bit of that? Or you uh, that I'm not sure if Paul Rubens is, is going to, you know, reach through the, the microphone and strangle Paul, me. If Paul Rubens is going to come here and be like, Hey, what are you doing to my voice? Exactly. But, uh, no, it's, it, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, certainly this is one of the, the characters that I watched growing up when, uh, you know, on Saturday morning and stuff. But we'll see if we can do this without blowing your beam. Ah, everybody goes to having a lot of fun in the it's not. Uh, it's 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 really it's that, that was horrible. But uh, anyways, I just have a lot of fun. I mean, um, well, ma- mainly it's it's a lot of cartoon characters. You know, like the classic Rocky and Bullwinkle, the South Park, that sort of thing. And that's essentially could, what I grew up. Could we possibly get any uh, preview of your South Park watches? Uh, South Park, right? See? Uh, see if I can tap into my inner cousin. Um it really depends on what the just three three boys have thought that you're in case that was a good thing. It's really angry at the time. You really don't know. And then they'll talk something. You're trying to do what you know, show up. You're on the radio. Man. You're, you're fucking nice. And, and you're probably trying to keep things in, in line and whatnot. And you just try to go big and loud and get the guy with that. And then you don't stand up to come in and try to figure out how, what's going on. And Mr. Hanky has not said no idea what's happening. Ooh, 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 ooh. And then Kenny comes in and he just wants to sit there and tell. Oh, forget to burn it out. Yeah, we don't want to talk about the 
Ow. No more no. no. Yeah, I'm kidding. I feel like I'm kidding. Why do you guys want to get high? <laughs> <laughs> so we could do this all day. And I yeah, I know. I, for the listeners now, I actually realized I could do a voice the other day. Uh, at, uh, Get ready for Scrappy Doo! Yeah, Ooh. there you go. I go with her. Hey, Ricky, what's me put a ribbon in my head? Wait, is that it? That would be the classic movie book. Oh. Really, Rocky? Oh, I can't, I can't do it. And here's the funny thing. This, 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 this is trivia for all those who are listening out there. If you think of Bullwinkle the Moose and Barney the Dinosaur, the only difference is Barney the Dinosaur just sounds like Bullwinkle with a lobotomy. Observe. Hey, Lucky, what's me blue red in my head? I love you. Wow. You love me. I had a lobotomy. So you want to talk about, you know, copyright infringement and such. This is, this is the way, you know, cartoons have transcended generations, and now you know way too much about me. But uh, I, I, love, oh. I love what I do. It's a little bit better. A lot of fun. And, uh, it's about, now, what kind of music, you know? Well, this is kind of a broad that's question. Okay. That's okay. But uh, are you a fan of, of Metallica at all? I am. I am a fan of Metallica, believe it or not. A lot of people would not uh, picture that in my music library, but I grew up listening to... Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning, and Justice for All, the Black Album. I mean, that's pretty much where it ended Black for me. Album. The Black Album was great. And well, uh, if you guys stick around, I'll, I'll be playing the live album with the San Francisco Symphony, the s and album, Metallica, which is one of my favorite albums in the world. But this is something I can't wait to talk about, which is uh, we have a lot of similarities, I, I can see. Now, uh, you went to school for music theater growing up, like the high, high school or theater? Uh, actually, it wasn't a, a performance school as such. I, I, I grew up in Scarborough, and it was just, you know, a regular high school. I just happened to be in the music program as well as theater program. So it wasn't a performance arts school as such, but we had an incredible uh, program and, and teachers that took a lot of interest in their students and, and what they did as performers and really fostered that um, that spark that we needed to have to sort of propel us to the next level and decide if we want to go on further in the performance realm or just, you know, stick to it as a, as a credit and elective and, and take the take the mark and, and be gone. And that's what really lit the, the fire for me. I was doing uh, community theater at the time and that sort of thing, and, and I sort of got the acting bug very, very early on. And it just it really helped to, to develop my stage presence and my my comfort level that sort of way. But uh, no, it was never uh, never a performance dream as such. Uh, when I was at York here, I was a theater major, but was still able to do uh, music and such. I was a clarinet player for many many years. And so we're not strong. No. That would be the trump, but I no, no, I don't know anybody that wow. can imitate a clarinet, so we'll have to see if if, if, if anybody out there can imitate a clarinet, please uh, email me because I'd love to love to know what it sounds like. Because every time I do it, it just sounds like a dying goose. And uh, basically, that's that's how things went. And I just had a, a lot of fun, but I had some incredible teachers who were pr- musicians on their own, and then took the, the time to invest into their students to really foster their own, you know, personal and then, development. And then, how did you kick it to Canadian Idol? Oh, jeez. Uh, well, much like the other thousands of, you know, uh, aspiring musicians in, in this great country, uh, in 2003 I auditioned for the inaugural season and did not get that far in the competition, but I, I sort of became known as the footloose guy um, because of my audition and what I did, and I, I'm not going to bore your, your audience right now, but if you, you go on YouTube, you, you will probably find remnants of my original audition, but all I can say is it was a, a great experience, had a lot of fun, didn't get that far in, in the show, but they brought me back for a special episode as well as the finale, and it's from there that I met my first producer and a number of people in the industry, and really got to... Uh, begin to build my network professionally as a, as a musician and, and start to work with some great people and just get to know uh, some of the, the main players. And, and if I had been a jerk about it, it would have stopped there. So it's all just about having an incredible experience for those of you that haven't done a talent show like that. I encourage you, even just for your own you know, sense, to basically do that. And just, just have fun. But uh, it's, it's a great experience, and I'm, I'm very thankful to the ones at Insight for what they started. Well, uh, I'm understanding you might have a little treat for us, just to, just a bit if you want to sing something a cappella. Sure. But I'm going to give you a set to set up. Here's Scotty Newland. Tell me why. Stay around, because i got a special treat from Scotty Newland to you, to your ears. Stick around. Yeah. 
counter tenors out there that might appreciate this and, and know this is not a trick. <coughs>
Please Die by Remote broke in me. They were on my show not too long ago, and they do that awesome go is somebody that I used to know cover. Check them out. Die by Remote on my Facebook. Broke in me. Say radio. Taylor North. Oh. Yuri here. Yuri, uh, you're not even an intern anymore, but you're Russian, aren't you? Yes, I believe so. I am. <laughs> what? You're both now. Yep. I. We've been over this, man. You just you just walked in like ten minutes ago. You looked at me and then walked back out. I didn't even notice. <laughs> you look um, like this bald eagle, man. You see, <laughs> you look like you grow feathers over time. <laughs> I, I cannot look at you while I do this. It's funny. <laughs> so um, I was thinking since uh, Biker James isn't in here, what what is his name for you? I think it's uh, I I'm not sure if his first name or last name is uh, James or it's, I have, I have no idea actually. But uh, I I kind of miss him and I miss that horrible cigarette smell that he brought into the place, that uh, aroma that he did. But I was wondering if you wanted to take the uh, album review. I sent you the album. Yes, yes, good album. I, I, I do this good for you. I write this down. The symphony is so, so good. It kicks, it kicks in the ass for you. A big, is it one big little push? Uh, it makes maybe appreciate more the instruments and both in all of this. You know, the violins, everything like that. Collaboration, that sort. It gives some nice new birth to each song I listen to. And I appreciate more. Wow. 
Thanks, Gary. That's, that's, that's actually a lot better than uh, James ever did. James, you take from uh, the whole way, man. I, I know how to do. I, I know you for a while. Better than you know yourself. You're just getting kind of creepy, buddy. <laughs> here, why don't you take the weather? Why don't you finish up here? Okay, see radio turn on the weather. Tonight is 10 degrees in the rain. Tomorrow, 13 degrees rain. Thursday, clean up is 21 degrees. Saturday, say this. It's nice, not rain, but next day, uh, oh, I mean, right now it rains. I think. We'll get outside. Whatever. I just. You can't even not see outside for me. This is your brother, huh? He looks nothing like you. Cause that's because uh, we're stepbrothers. Well, his family is more attractive than yours. I see that much. That's damn right. Are you, are you trying to come on to my brother? You, you always think I'd be gay. I can compliment someone without being gay for you. Jeez. Okay. The box office this weekend. Number one, paranormal activity for paranormal. Paranormal. It's one of those words, huh? You see. Paranormal activity for uh, 29 million. Number two, Argo, 16 million. Three, Taken Two, 13 million. Four, Hotel Transylvania, four, or 13 million, sorry. Five, Alex Cross, 11 million. What kind of name for a movie is that? It's just, it's just someone's name. Uh, the new releases to look out for is uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. He chops off head, he makes it bread. <laughs> what? I thought I make joke. I make a land joke for you. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Iron Maiden is this, this remastered CD. You sent this to me. I did not listen. Why not? I, I, Iron Maiden don't like. But uh, the Magic Mike comes out too. Just, just Magic Mike. What do you mean? No, it's like you said, the Magic Mike. It's just Magic Mike. No one cares. <laughs> no one. You correct me all the time. No one even cares. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. You want to use entry to the next song? Sit movie down, here you Well, thanks. I guess that's all you needed to do, really. Next week, what, uh, what album do you want to review? I don't know. I'll get back to you on that, Gary. That was Gary, the, the uh, Russian weatherman, I guess. This is Sit Movie Down, Aerials, on the Dr. T Show. Four more minutes. Going to give away that big prize pack. Now, my darling, I shall suck your blood. Ew. <laughs> what? Your breath is disgusting. What do you mean? Your breath. It smells disgusting. <sighs> oh. Just here, try some dunking ice. <sighs> See, now that's better. Thank you. Now there will be. <laughs> Don't leave your breath smelling like a monster. Kill dentine ice. And call in right now. Call in right now at 730. 416 491 5050 extension 33430. You won yourself. Big old prize pack, including CDs, free shots, free entrance to the party on Friday, and some womb t shirts. Check it, call in right now. 416 491 5050, extension 334. Hey, if no one calls, can I have all that say? I don't know. So, congratulations goes out to Sarah for winning the second prize of the night, which includes. Two Scotty Newlands CDs, a poster, free shots, free entrance to the party on Friday, and a t-shirt. It's a trick-or-treat fog Halloween party with Raider Ray Entertainment. Friday, October 26th, oh yes, this is Friday, Peanut Plaza, which is 3030 Don Mills Road, just down the street from Newlands campus. Not that far, in a car. It's um, free shots for everybody in costumes before 1030, 250 tequila shots, $3 fines, $10 pitches with green body shots, and... Free candy. But I'm going to Bain, so I have no idea how I'm going to eat it. <laughs> There's one of the free candies just lying around. Chocolate bar, score, M&M, peanuts. Or M&M pretzels. You know that, that they have pretzels now? Young, younger brother of mine? I have not been aware of the M&M peanuts. Pretzels. That's pretzels. 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 You never heard I, of to say, I, know, I know M&M peanuts, so I'm very aware of those. We'll get, we'll get this. I went to a multicultural party on the weekend, 
And it it was different. It was fun. I had like a time of my life. I got drunk. Well, I, well, I didn't get drunk. I, uh, it was different. Yeah, yeah, it was different. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds different. Man. But uh, it was mostly Asian and French, Japanese, and from France, French Asians, which I'm trying to say. And I don't know uh, if this is the norm in France or Japan, but I, twice I got asked to compare penis sizes while I was taking a test. Twice now. What kind of party was this, sir? This, this was just a normal party. Normal party. Normal party. And twice they're like, oh, let me see your penis. Let me see your penis. Mine's so small. And I'm not even exaggerating. That's a direct quote from what happened on the weekend. Wow. Have you, has that ever happened to you in yeah, college now that you're in college living me. by yourself? Yes, living with my girlfriend, and yeah, that doesn't really happen to me. No. So. It should, well, it should be a chance in everybody's life where a friend Jason comes up to Yeah, well, I mean, I'm still so young, so we yeah. have time to go. we got a lot of time. A lot of time for a friend Jason to come up to you and compliment your pizza size. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tommy Tito, 8675309. Get it. So I say that, 8675309. 8675 Thank you all once again for listening to my show. It's 8 o'clock almost. I'll see you all on Friday and happy Halloween to y'all. Happy out. Oh, the Beatles at the end. See you next week.